The Giant in Black Ops 3 Zombies is genuinely, in my opinion, one of the most overlooked and, let's say, underappreciated maps in all of Call of Duty Zombies history. It also lays out a really nice set of blueprints for how I feel like remasters should be handled in the future. And today, I'm going to make a case as for why The Giant is one of the most well thought out and executed maps in Black Ops 3, and why it's not exactly comparable to some of the greatest of all time maps that are generally beloved by the entire community. The Giant Giant is in its own pocket, but it does something really well. So welcome everybody back to a brand new series I'm going to be trying out. Now, this is, is not going to be a map review series in any way whatsoever. This is more or less going to focus on specific aspects in Zombies. That could be a map, or it could be an Easter egg, or it could be a very specific game mechanic and how it affects the overall gameplay of Zombies. I think I'm going to do a video like this two or three times a week, so if you have any suggestions of what you would like to see me break down, let me know down below in the comment section. But also, if you guys enjoyed the video, drop a like rating, subscribe if you're brand new, but let's get into this. The Giant launched with Black Ops 3 Zombies as a bonus map. This was able to be acquired if you had pre-ordered the game or if you had paid a little bit extra money to download this as well. It did not come on disc, but for most Zombies fans, The Giant was an absolute no-brainer to get. It only made sense. The release of The Giant was not the first time Doris had been remastered. We saw this come back in the Black Ops 1 last DLC. However, what The Giant managed to do as compared to the Black Ops 1 edition of Doris was in surmountable. There was a significantly bigger jump in the evolution of zombies from Black Ops 1 to Black Ops 3 than there was in World at War to Black Ops 1, where the map had previously been remastered. Zombies had changed a lot in that time, and the giant yet still managed to keep the heart of Doris. Original Doris was absolutely groundbreaking. It still maintained the very straightforward premise of World at War zombies, which is simply last as long as possible, but it was able to bring enough innovation and intricate detail to cater to all different styles of play and still being a genuine challenge to even veteran zombies players every time you go back and visit Doris. And the giant didn't lose that at all when it was remastered. On surface value, the giant appears to be a World at War map been repurposed for Black Ops 3 with not as many of the features as a typical BO3 map will have. But when you dive a little bit deeper, that's not really the case. This map is the perfect example of the philosophy which says less is more. Comparing the microsystems of the giant to virtually every other Black Ops 3 map, it would seem that the giant is the least substantial out of all of them, but I would argue that's actually the opposite case. One of the biggest differences you're going to immediately notice is the lack of perks on the giant. Now, at any point in the game, you can have a max total of six perks on this map, with stamina up and deadshot being interchangeable per game, meaning you cannot have both of these perks within the same match. While this does have a slight downside of making you have to reset your game if you don't get the perks you want, it also simultaneously adds value and charisma to each perk. The two different perks that are interchangeable are also specifically catered for the two most popular yet different kinds of playstyles. Deadshot is going to be for the players that enjoy the camping playstyle a bit more, while Stamina Up is going to be for the players that like to stay on their feet and use their movement a bit more. But you're never able to obtain both at the same time, meaning no perk on the giant ever feels like it goes to waste. Every single thing feels valuable and every perk you have lost feels like it's an actual detriment to your gameplay. This map also features no Widow's Wine, which is the only map in Black Ops 3, Chronicles included, not to have this perk. And listen, while I personally love Widow's Wine, I think it's appropriate in some maps, and it actually adds a lot of depth and intricacy to the gameplay, the Giant plays best without it, and I truly believe that. On top of this, this map also does not feature a zombie shield whatsoever, or even Electric Cherry. And your first instinct might be to think that adding all of these things, a zombie shield, Widow's Wine, Electric Cherry, what have you would add more depth and replayability because you know it has more mechanics but I actually think that would be very counterintuitive and the point of the giant is to almost be starved of resources. I hear the term a lot thrown around in videos and on streams classic zombies and you guys have probably heard this a lot too but no one really defines or articulates what that means. Classic zombies as far as I can tell means being put up against an almost immovable object a force to, to overcome that you barely have enough resources is to even scrape by until you're able to use your wit and put enough together where you can really make a big jump over your enemy. But the majority of your gameplay is consisting of you being disadvantaged almost the entire time by the just sheer number of enemies and zombies. Very meticulously allocating where you want to spend your resources and your points and what gun 
guns to get are all part of the very fun decision making that is progressing in zombies and the giant is actually one of the best maps to do this in bo3 on the giant has almost no safety nets whatsoever in this map even when you're optimally set up with full perks wonder weapon and all there's still nothing from you making a small mistake and going down in the blink of an eye a lot of other maps widow's wine can save you or a specialist weapon can save you if you get into a situation the specialist weapon on the giant is really nothing to write home about either of course you can get the specialist weapon by doing a very small samantha says easter egg quest that was featured in world at war the black ops 3 version while slightly different will give you a annihilator as a reward and it seems like because it's not that effective even into higher rounds the reward more or less fits the effort that you need to put in right while the giant does reward the curious it doesn't overpower you for you know very little to no effort the giant also does something very special where it genuinely gets a bit more difficult or it takes longer to plateau in terms of high rounds than most maps do when you think about it the heart and the point of a zombies map is to get more difficult as the rounds progress you know ultimately leading to your demise and you know that there are some maps in the game that sort of plateau in terms of difficulty where when you're fully set up it's more or less about how much time you're going to put into the map versus an actual test of your skill but the giant actually it does plateau but it takes a lot longer to do so the giant has multiple viable strategies that either involve camping or training or anything creative that allows you to survive but as the rounds progress the amount of viable strategies slowly gets pinched off to where you're down to only just a couple and the skill that is required to play in those strategies to bring you through those higher rounds increases as well so when practicing these strategies you will become a better player over time and this does two things simultaneously it becomes one of the most replayable maps in history and it also provides something for everyone which is very difficult for a modern day zombies map to do it also serves as the perfect adjunct to Shadows of Evil, which was of course the map it launched alongside, and when Black Ops 3 came out, the balance was struck between these two maps when those were the only two available, and we didn't really realize it at the time. Shadows of Evil, of course, is the more intricate map of the two, and many people complained about Shadows as it felt like a chore to do anything on and set up, and that's actually true to some degree. But those complaints more or less faded as time went on, and a lot of people said Shadows of Evil, you know, it aged really well but I actually think it's we as a community that aged into Shadows of Evil, and that's a little bit different, but I'll say that for another time. The point I'm trying to make, the giant was the perfect counterbalance to what Shadows of Evil brought to the table. Shadows took enough risk, and it was chaotic enough where it was unpredictable, and it wasn't exactly sure how it was going to go. The giant on the other side of that coin was completely opposite. This was the map that was a surefire hit. This was the map that had been done before the tried and true formula, this was the order to Shadows of Evil's chaos. Now, Pat made a video the other day. In his Die Rise retrospective, he mentioned that without that map in particular, Black Ops 2 would have lost a lot. It wouldn't have been as complete of an experience. He mentions that in Black Ops 3, you could have removed Garad Krovi, and you wouldn't really be missing that much in Black Ops 3. Garad Krovi is an excellent map, and it always will be, but there were still a lot of maps that play quite like it, that the experience could be more or less filled by other means. And a a lot of ways I think I agree with Pat there however when I put the giant in place of that I actually think Black Ops 3 would have lost significantly more if this map had been removed or not there at all the giant was the barrier to entry for casual players and it was very easy to get themselves invested in first time zombie players or people just introducing their friends into Black Ops 3 often chose the giant always to start with instead of Shadows of Evil if Black Ops 3 was your first zombies experience Shadows of Evil could have been a big turnoff and the giant Giant was really where you went to get your training wheels and sort of dip your toes into the water. This introduced to you almost all of the systems that were to come in the rest of the Black Ops 3 season, but in small micro doses. You had a very small little Easter egg quest you could do to sort of dig a little bit deeper and find another layer that all the maps have to offer. It maintained the normal progression that Doris brought to the table, where as you explore the map, you're going to have more features at your disposal, ultimately leading to Pack-A-Punch.
It's a very welcoming map, especially to new players, as the barrier to entry is very low. The premise is incredibly straightforward, but also at the same time doesn't hold your hand through the entire setting up process the way that a lot of zombies maps do now. In fact, just in the scope of Black Ops 3, it's actually one of the most punishing maps for when you make a mistake. And over time, while this sucks while it happens, it will make you a much stronger zombies player in the future. And it's always very clear to see your mistake where you made it on the giant and what you could have done differently. On some zombies maps and especially in black ops 4 you don't always really know what you did wrong or what you could have done better the giant is completely in your face about it this map is essentially your best friend who's brutally honest with you and, and points out your weakest flaws. But because he's also your best friend, he's on your side the entire way and helps you become a better player. It's truly an anomaly to me because this is pretty much one of the only World at War maps repurposed for Black Ops 3 that I feel like still retains its spirit and gameplay. The same cannot be said for the rest of the Zombies Chronicles maps, and I just get to wondering if, you know, Black Ops 3 had launched with any of the Chronicles maps, we'll say Nocturne Toten, for example, would Black Ops 3 have even been successful as it was long term? I don't know. While this map tends to get overlooked now because, of course, it already is a repurposed map we've played, there's no big extravagant boss fight, there is no flashy, huge mechanics that really separate it from something else, I also think that it's one of the most well-crafted zombies experiences to date. In many ways, I see the giant as the unsung hero of Black Ops 3. It's essentially the foundation or the crutch of what all of the other maps have to rely on. It takes all of the highlighted best parts about Black Ops 3 and condenses them down into one map that we pretty much all love. Cutting away all of the fat and fluff that many of the BO3 maps feature, while I still think they play absolutely wonderfully, the giant is just something that is unmatched. That being said, the giant is of course not a perfect zombies map. I don't don't even think that would be possible, nor would you want a perfect zombies map, but it is, in my opinion, the proper format for a remaster. It is the best framework we have for bringing a map from any time period and repurposing it for your new game. And most importantly, without losing the spirit that made that original map so fun and successful in the first place. The giant is not comparable to other outstanding maps that we all generally love. Derizon Jurok Origins all come to mind, you know, maps that are generally beloved by the community. I don't like putting the giant side by side with those because they're not at all the same thing. Even though they're featured within the same game, they don't play on the same wavelength whatsoever. And in my opinion, this is the way remasters in the future should be modeled after. But this is my take on the matter. I would love to know what you guys think of this map. And also, let me know you thought of the video. If you guys did enjoy, please make sure to give the video a like rating, subscribe if you are brand new, and also let me know what topic you would like to hear about next would you like to hear me break down a specific map or an easter egg or anything of that nature i'd love to know but i'm gonna do this a couple times a week and hope you guys enjoyed this so stick around for more and i'll see you guys in the next one take it easy everybody and peace out